right, who's who's bringing us in? It's Aramis' turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's like looking at his blinking. <laughs> tink, 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 tink. <laughs> just got here um who's introducing this episode oh i'm not doing that absolutely not i don't like things like that you don't like things like that <laughs> <laughs> just started out with something like welcome back everybody to the natty 19 podcast i'm your host and dm jonathan marshall i'm here once again full crew pounding them out pounding week after week pounding episodes out we had a great week hope everybody else had a great week uh, actually, this week wasn't all too great. <laughs> uh, we ran into a bunch of obstacles and everything, and but here we are. We're here. We had to reschedule things. We lost power today. Nobody but, even talked about that. We lost power. We are power. committed. We're yeah, committed we to playing. We are committed. If you have any questions about anything we're doing, if you want to talk to us about things, send us an email at natty19podcast at gmail.com. Or you can leave us a message on Facebook, Twitter. Introduce yourself. We'd love to get to know you. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to get right into it. So we're going to get right to business. Guys, you guys finally... After all the fucking bickering and moaning, you hit level four. <laughs> bickering? <laughs> yeah, bickering as to, between me and you guys right. as to when you should level up. When so are we level up? It happened. You hit level four. Quincy, ability score or feet? What would you go with? I went with an ability score. I usually go for feats because I like the flavor that it gives my character. But um, Quincy, uh, I took the alternate uh, builds at the beginning level one so i i sacrificed some ability score points already to choose a feat ah. so for this for level four i went ahead and and upped my dexterity um it makes sense for quincy um he's he's quick on his feet and that's his that's the stat he'll he uses for his rapier so while he's getting a little bit of experience finally with the blade real life experience mm -hmm. i'm thinking that that's you know that's the way to go yeah Mm, Quincy's Dexy. Uh, Copernicus Heart. <laughs> you, you don't want to do hit points next? Uh, no. Um, yeah, okay. Shh, fuck it. Let's roll some hit points for Quincy. All We're right. going to roll hit points. All right. That's a D12 for Bard. Have we been rolling every time like strictly, or have I been giving you the opportunity to... Did I give you the opportunity to The opportunity to choose is... The Oh, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, we could take the hit points, mm -hmm. so the base, whatever it is, which isn't bad. I think it's a little bit above 50%. Or you roll and we roll. And the and highest. whoever gets the highest, ah, we take it. The old I roll. And I think rolls. we all rolled. Oh, fuck, I didn't get I dice. Do, I do think we all opted to roll. We, because all we got balls went with in this guild. That choice. And I think most is people it really ended up that, better off. Is it really that risky if I'm rolling? No, it's not. I did not, not end not up better really. off. Yeah, you, you were the bad. only one. But yeah. I think, though, you st stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what am I rolling for Quincy? We understand it's not working for uh, you. D12. But... A D12. Ooh. I haven't busted out a, a D12. D12? Oh. <laughs> oh. No. He bought it. Do they right. still make you're those? Tanking. Oh, he's fucking Oh, you're with lying you. to me? <laughs> it's a D8. It's a D8. <laughs> Everybody listening at home, do not trust your players, even if you've known them your entire life. Do not. You should do know it. Uh, that a bard does not get a D12. I got it. So I'm looking at everybody. What, do you, what right, am I right. really rolling? A, a D4? D8. D8. I thought it was a D4. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think Quincy's tanking from now on. Ooh. What do you get? I can't see it. The laptop's in the way. Nice. Max ah, I hit see, point. I want to see what you would roll anyway. All right. Three. I All right. I eight. <laughs> we'll go with mine. All right. Go so eight DMs, is. All right. Copernicus Heart. Ability score or feet? Sybil has given me new power. I picked a feat. I, I opted for that instead of the ability score. I was really thinking about split classing. But um, I won't drag that out, but it's something I may do in the future. So for now, I went with uh, Savage Strike. What is What exactly does that do? allows me to re-roll all my damage dice every time I attack and hit. So if but I don't... You have, to, you have to go with the final one, though, don't you? No, I can pick. Bullshit. Yeah, look it up. Page 169. Okay, let's get handbook. on that. 
<laughs> Man, Savage Attacker, what is up with that skill? He's fucking badass, right? All right, what do you savage. got for hit point? What's your hit die? Um, Hit die, eight. Eight. D8. Here Ready? we go. Three, two, one, go for go. it. Go. I got three. Two. Oh. oh. I'm rolling rocks over here, man. You're probably still ahead overall, right? So I got plus five in the end, because I get... Two for the constitution bonus. Zavril, uh, you're level four now. What did what did Zavril go with? Uh, feet or abilities? Plus two to ability scores. I got tired of just whipping stuff, so I went went with the feet. Okay. Um, what feet did you go with? Martial adept. Martial adept. You want to give a quick, just a quick rundown of that. Um, essentially what it does is it allows you to, uh, choose two bonuses from the, uh, battle master. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, ba- the, you know, the, the fighter, um, path. the battle master. Yep. Yeah. Path. Uh, the ones I chose were, uh, trip attack and disarming attack. Nice. nice. I like them. Going, uh, yeah. All right. I, I figured they fit right along there with the whip, you know, like yeah. if I can hit, hit somebody's legs, try to wrap them up or, uh. Yep. Yank a weapon out of their hands. Exactly. Yeah. Sweet. So, so my next question for you would be, what's your hit die? As a ranger, I get a D10. All right, D10. Let's see a roll. Better beat a four. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll take max. All right. Oh, wow. Nice. Two max two? rolls. Yeah. Max roll. Wow gonna have to kick things up a notch in this campaign <laughs> Irme, you leveled up did you choose ability scores or did you go with a feat i chose a feat it was a tough call because i would have liked to have bumped up my ac a bit but i did go with lucky um and it basically gives me three re-rolls a day and I can re-roll on attack rolls ability checks or saving throws and i can also um when an attack is made against me, I can roll a d20, and I can choose to use my attack roll instead of oh oh I didn't know about that the one. attacker's roll. Did you make that part up? No, I didn't. <laughs> and uh, yeah, those reboot after a long rest, and that yeah, I figured Lucky went um, really well with Irame's character. So all right, awesome. Yeah, that works out well. Now, what's your hit die? D6. D6. All right, let's go. B to three. Oh, she gets three plus constitution <laughs> modifier. Oh, damn it. What would yeah, it have been half. normally for? Oh, so you're still good. Oh, and while I have you doing that, what? so now what is Aramay's total hit points? 21. Total? <laughs> yeah, total. All right, I got my. No, all right, so now my roll twenty is open again. Irme, were you wounded at all? I don't think so. Were you? No, I don't believe so. Uh, Copernicus, what's your new total hit points? Uh, thirty-one. Thirty-one. So you're at twenty out of thirty-one right now, or you gained the? I have minus twelve hit points on my sheet. So. Oh, so you have twelve wounds. Yep, twelve wounds. Brings you to 19. Um, Quincy, what's your... You're at one hit point I have you at. Oh, is that why it's not written down in my... <laughs> what's your... You just yeah. got brought up. You just yeah. got brought up with a medicine skill or whatever, medicine check. Uh, what's your total hit points? 30. 30. Now 30, and you're at one out of 30. You got and your hit points back because you leveled up. Those points uh, you just rolled, that I you rolled, just get. I rolled eight, so I'll have nine total. Wait, you get those back? We for leveling we up. Gain. Do we have them? Do we gain the ones oh, that we? Y- y- yeah. yeah. So yeah, he's not at one hit point. It. He's at. So then I'll be at nine. You'll be at nine. Quincy is now at nine. Yeah. Let's say you got reinvigorated. You're gonna die anyway <laughs> when you come out of here. So. I know, right? How many people are waiting for us up top? I put Zavril up to sixteen. Uh, Copernicus, what are you at now? Uh, Twelve wounds. So I don't know. 21. Nineteen. 19. So you already calculated those added hit points yep. then. And Arame's full. I don't know how she came out of that unscathed. 
I um, they were melee attackers. I kept my distance. Yeah. All right, guys. You know, I would have kept my distance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get back and let's, let's get, get back, back in the world. <laughs> you know, I don't believe that we've uh, looted these bodies. Give me the loot. Well, what what were there? There's what two uh, a scimitar. I mean, there wasn't anything special. What scimitar? couple scimitars I think there was. Poison-coated scimitar. A man after my own kind. As soon as he comes to, and the first thing he thinks of is treasure. You've had quite the influence on me. Between the two bodies, let's say there was seven gold pieces. Yeah, there wasn't much. I think the bulk of the treasure you guys already got down here in trinkets and such. Uh, I'm taking a look at that poison, poisonous blade. Yeah. Yeah, it's a simple scimitar that ha- has been coated with some sort of poisonous substance. How many uses does one typically get? Uh, why don't you give me a nature check? Only a six. Cappy doesn't know a five. Yeah, seven. Yeah, you have... Uh, what about you, Zave? You going to try to assess the poison? Yeah, I will. I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah it's <laughs> we're all looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> what were we I don't trying? know. What do you think? Again? <laughs> Three, four. <laughs> what were we're we city doing folk. Again? <laughs> I'm pretty sure all the poisons inside of me are in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have no idea how many more uh, uses it has before it's uh, depleted. Why don't you uh, pull out that D12? You could. <laughs> You get D12 uses. You get to roll that puppy. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd rather you guys not know until you can check again on the following day. Another nature check to figure out how many more right. coats you have. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. you're just going to use it until it's gone, I'm assuming, right? It's a scimitar? It is. If nobody else wants it, I guess Cappy will kind of strap it to him for yeah. now. I think it's a 1D6 slashing for a scimitar. It's all yours, my friend. You're amazed thinking she does need a weapon improvement soon. Since she's been in this jungle, but she doesn't really know how to use much. I too am thinking of uh, maybe something with range. I mm. seem to be quite ineffective at long distance. Oh, there is uh, actually. I did say there was a bow on the guy's back. Um, I want to say it was a short bow, but I could be mistaken. Let me. Did I, do any of you guys remember if I said long bow or short bow? I don't recall. I don't recall. I do know that I already threw a longbow into the bushes. Yeah, so it's a, <laughs> so yeah. It, it is a longbow then, because they all pretty most of them carry the same shit. The last thing Cappy will do with the bodies is he'll kneel down to the pure blood, kind of lift her head up by the hair, and hack off some of the hair all and right. stuff it in his pouch. Pure blood hair. I'm sure I can find a use for this. You were quite disturbing, friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quincy's just going to avert his gaze a little bit and, you know, maybe look for some count the arrows for the longbow. Uh, the quiver, the longbow, he has, uh, I don't think he fired any during that fight, so he's got a full quiv, 20. So, yeah, what do you guys do? You're in, you're still in this tomb. Now, you had all week to think about this. Have it, has anybody put any thought towards this situation and the way you approached it and what could possibly be waiting up up, up top? Ooh, I'd like to say that I have, but... <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time to rest down here for an hour? I fear that the longer that these two are missing, and I gesture, gesture toward the um, fallen, then the more at risk we are. And we should move with haste. Yes, we're cornered down here as well. Well, why don't we do an intelligence check? Do we still hear the beating drum? Oh, yeah. Natty 19. All right. Woo. Keeping it hot. 15. Oh, you so smart. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so, as, so I'm going to do a quick refresher then based on intelligence checks. I'm gonna, I, this is a new rule. Now, you guys were up top. You decided... Instead of fucking with the drum, you're going to sneak down in here first, figure out what's going on. While you were down here, you heard the lift coming down, and when, and then you hid. And what you saw when these two creatures came down, these two Yuanti came down, they were already armed and looking for you guys at this point, okay? So with that information, it might 
better uh, give you an understanding of what possibly may follow. At le- they at least knew we were down here, so there may be others. It was obvious we were down here. We, we left the lift down. I think they f- may have found the bodies as well, or at least seen that the prisoners were no longer in the huts. Yeah, that was really the only real change uh, that that you guys had made was the prisoners were gone and, uh, yeah, and uh, the guard that's missing. I feel we can count all the dangers there are up there, but we still have only one choice. We have to get up. Yeah, um, is it worth perhaps looking for a secret door or something? How long would that take? Oh, jeez, that could take upwards to... In 20 minutes or so. I mean, maybe if you guys were... If you guys were going to take an hour-long short rest or whatever, maybe that's something that you, somebody could do in the meanwhile if somebody doesn't have to have that short rest. I don't know. I guess, I mean, does searching for secret doors, is that strenuous? Because I think a short rest, you can still, like, kind of do menial tasks. I wouldn't consider it strenuous unless you're lifting stuff out of the way. What if, what if each right. of us took one room to look could we quicken it that way like you know if two of us you know if we branched out yeah if you split up mm-hmm. yeah having these two be gone for an hour would not bode well to whoever may be waiting for them yeah i think we should probably go with haste either rest for an hour and plan on fighting or let's get out of here let's just and plan on fighting <laughs> yes either way but down here i fear we have we have nowhere to go yeah, let's just, I, I guess let's just go. We, we should be prepared for an ambush at the top. Others might be waiting. You already nearly died once today, Quincy. Yeah, let's get a sense. I know we just went over this, but raise your hand. Like, who, who is very wounded right now? I have, okay, so we have Zavril. I'm good. I'm almost halfway down. Okay, I will cast Cure Wounds second level on both Zavril and myself, and that's all of my second level spells. And what is that, 2d8 plus my... Okay, so Zavril, that is 15. Nice. That's a good one. Thank you, Sir Quincy. And nine one. for myself. A juicy one. Before we ascend, Irame would like to cast Blade Ward on herself. It's a cantrip, so... And uh, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And Cappy will cast False Light on himself. It's a new cantrip I have through my nice. leveling up. Fiendish Vigor, actually, is what it's called. So that will give me plus six hit points for now. Yeah, and as we're raising the, uh, it doesn't, my duration is short, but as we're raising the platform, I'll cast True Strike. Okay, so 19 night all, right? Is it midnight? Yep. And you guys are hardly in a resting position. <laughs> it looks like we will be spending the solstice in the jungle. As you pile onto the lift, who is going to be cranking the wheel? Quincy. Quincy's operating the lift. As you guys begin to make your dis- your ascent, make a give me a perception check and DC ten. Pass. Pass. We got a one. Fail. <laughs> I got a 16. 16 perceptions. Okay, so uh, everybody but Arame, if if I'm uh, correct. Now, you guys, as you're going up the lift, you notice the drum shifts into a slightly different beat. Mm. So it's not Eye of the Tiger anymore? It's not Eye of the Tiger. Now we're looking at, like, Raining Blood by Slayer. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's yeah. never raining men, is it? I was thinking battery, <laughs> Metallica. There we go. All right, yeah. Or ride the lightning. And that would be another good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so now as you're getting closer to the surface and the drum changes tune, you there's a poetic word for when you when Ascending. you when you break the uh. you know psh, you break the level. Yeah, when you, yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't think of it right now, so instead I'll just say, you appear up top, and <laughs> when you do... Emerge. <laughs> you emerge from the depths below. <laughs> yeah. 
Now you notice at least 15 to 20 Zinti are all standing around the platform lift, leaving just an opening in their ranks to the southern, on the southern end where two of the snake-headed Yuanti stand on either side of one of the more human-looking ones. And they're all staring at you. The Zinti, while facing you, you notice, have that same vacant stare that they had before when they were building. Uh, Most are unarmed, but some do wield simple tools. The human-like one steps forward about five feet. You can see she's unarmed, uh, but does have a short bow slung over her shoulder with a quiver at her belt. Uh, And as she moves forward, you also spot a strapped dagger on her thigh uh, as the slit of her Light, lightly fitted robe shifts just enough when she moves forward. Uh, the two Malisons on either side of her have their bows trained on you, on you guys. So, is there anything you can or want to do in within this moment? This is a false tomb, you know. Anyone else uh, want to act or do anything real quick? Or? Quincy just turns to look at Copernicus. And he's just waiting know, to see right? what the fuck he's gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's all I have. <laughs> it's a false tomb. What are you snake men doing here? Did you just use the S word? <laughs> <laughs> the woman lifts her hand with her fingers extended towards the Malison on the drum, and the drumming becomes softer, but it does still persist. And then she begins to speak. My name is Shea Salar Corventus. You who dared defile the tomb of the great Rossin Sea, lay down your arms and you may yet live out your remaining days in servitude. If not, you will be dealt with accordingly to ensure the progression of our great work is not delayed any further. I leave the choice to you. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> when, when, when Copernicus chuckles, now when Copernicus chuckles, Quincy's gonna chuckle. All right, hold on. <laughs> let me let me put you guys. <laughs> let me put you guys on the map before you make Here any rash we'll, we'll decisions. Look around, confused, and go. <laughs> 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 Zabril is not going to laugh. <laughs> so now I got you guys on the map. Once again, this is my custom built Taguda Village map. If you guys notice or not, I did add a few more trees. I don't see them. To give it a little bit more, you know, life. It looks like maybe you actually prepped a little this week. Yeah, I did a little bit of work. <laughs> Look at all those Zinti. There's a bunch of Zinti. All in uniform formation. They kind of look like airbenders. They do. Fuck. Yeah, they kind of do, don't they? Shit. Uh, no, so, okay. Got all the Zinti surrounding you. There's an opening in their ranks to the south, revealing just maybe about... Uh, let me put you guys. Where are you guys? Oh, my God. In the center of the Zinti, are we not? Yeah, you guys are in the center, but I got to grab your... We are on gotta, the lift. I got to grab your guys. We are right in the middle of fuckery. All right, that looks about right. <sighs> All right, so let's see. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, about 30 feet to the south of you is the woman in the two Malisons. Now you see coming out of the hut to the left, there is one of those lizard-like beasties that was patrolling. And also in that guard tower is another uh, of the snake-headed men. Uh, in the guard tower, I knew with we his should have bow cleared the guard tower before we went mm. down. And then, of course, the one that's playing the drums that's closest to you guys. Uh, only separate this, but separating you from him are about four of the Zinti uh, builders. The tribesmen. one playing the drums, he's on a. You said he was on a. He's on a little bit of a platform, maybe about Perhaps a seven, six, seven foot on him. Uh, tall platform. I just wanted to show you guys the map before you made any. Uh, decisions lowered the platform you fool <laughs> see i'm thinking <laughs> if we go down below we have to fight we may have a better vantage point from down below but up here we at least have the opportunity to try to flee 
Copernicus' heart does not run. <laughs> nice. I do not often make bold statements, but I would rather die fighting than become a slave to the Yuanti. If we become slaves, we die. They work them till they're dead. You know? We're like, it's not like we, oh, you know, slave life sucks, but at least it's life. Like, no, <laughs> we die here. <laughs> yes, but Zimwa B knows we're here. Okay. <laughs> hey, he, he got a party I together. He got a party together so that we could rescue. So you'd have to get two, another party to two, come back and rescue us. Two of the four people he left characters. behind are dead. <laughs> It'll be an endless cycle. Yeah. <laughs> that's his, that's his destiny. <laughs> Just to redo it over and over again. And our it's destiny, like Westworld. He's the NPC in Westworld. He oh, just keeps shit. <laughs> two right. of the four people from that party are dead. Well, I mean, let's look at the table here. You guys have already fought You've already gotten a taste of pretty much everything on this field of battle here previously. So, I mean, let's... If we if we can uh, take out the drummer, perhaps the Zinti will, will turn... Will fight with us. And f- help us turn the tides, exactly. I think we've spent long enough on this. Let's roll for initiative. Yeah, all that all that talking was happening, you know, while we were going. Yeah, I imagine lift. all of us. I imagine all of us are standing <laughs> with our backs to each other and moving yeah. in a circle. <laughs> we we're whispering. Them. She's like, "You have ten more minutes <laughs> to give me your answer." I was picturing it more like it was a football huddle. Talk- we're like, "Hold on one second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give that timeout sign. The, the, talk the talk amongst yourselves. Right. <laughs> well, right. we're thinking about the slave option. Hold on. <laughs> all right, you have ten what minutes. Ben- what benefits would we get? <laughs> Is that dental? Four hundred one k plan in Snake Village. <laughs> There's no insurance in Sevatu. <laughs> All right, right let's so roll uh, for initiative then. I got a good initiative. Ooh, fancy! It's better than mine. You're uh, you're always upping my initiative. I can't see it. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's now. only because Irame's more quick to acting on emotion. She's not a very good elf. <laughs> Lazy snake. Quincy, people. what do you got? 17. 17. Uh, Copernicus. Copernicus rolled a one. No bonuses? Oh, so it's a three. Uh, I see Zero got 11. Arame, what do you got? 19. 19. Okay. And Arame's always, always on top. She's antsy. I guess so. <laughs> oh, shit. Antsy fancy. I imagine that whenever Irame is in danger. She just, there's bubbling that happens. She can't, like, <laughs> deal. Maybe it has oh, to do with... She feels the electricity <laughs> in her hands and the magic starting to respond to the danger, and she's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so how about this? Call a meteor strike, and I'm going to jump down the uh, hole. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy, don't forget our agreement. Aye, Zavril. But if we both fall, then... Well, let's not think about that. I agree. All right, everybody. First and foremost, uh, the beginning of round one is going to make a perception check. DC 18. Nailed it. I'm not always going to tell you the DC. 21. 18. 23. We are on high alert. Yeah, we are. 15. All right, everybody with an 18 (laughs) plus notices movement. (laughs) Zavril, no surprise. (laughs) Uh, everybody with an 18 plus notices movement in the bushes in the outlying thick jungle. And I will show you on the map what. Reinforcements. So, perhaps. Can we move the tracker? We're a fucking dinosaur. Where are we going to move it to? I don't know. Somewhere. Somewhere around. over Kway's rolls. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Marshall. <laughs> no, I just. I, it's in the only place I, have I to can remind really, John you know to be mean? nice to his friends all the time. <laughs> I suck at dialogue. Okay. Here we go. So you notice movement uh, from the bushes over here, uh, not far from this tower. I got somewhere I can move that tracker to. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Everybody get that? So the movements, uh, I don't think Kway got it. Hold on. He didn't get it. It doesn't matter. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he didn't perceive it. it. Emerald doesn't see it anyway. I didn't see it, so it doesn't (laughs) matter. So you guys notice it right there. Uh, Select move. Good. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> did it tickle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it did, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you notice movement. You can't tell what it is, though. The bushes, like, shift. And then, round one. 
Irame. Irame is going to look to her friends and say, we're doing this? Quincy gives a short nod. Cap, he's just laughing and shaking his head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, okay. And she's going to cast Earth Tremor. All right, where are you putting it? Between the Zinti and the drum, I think, is as far as I can go with 10-foot range. And he needs to make a... Is it a deck save? Yep. And that's going to be a... Roll to 14. What's your... 12. So he passes. Yes. Uh, what happens when he passes? N- Nothing. But the ground becomes difficult terrain, I think. Yeah, which is just fucking not useful at all. It just made it harder. Does he still take the damage? Or was the deck save against being not prone? I believe... On a failed save, a creature takes 1d6 bludgeoning damage and is knocked prone. Oh, okay. So he must take the damage because he fell. But because he caught himself... He doesn't take any damage. Right. That's what it sounds like. Gotcha. Uh, Yeah, so the ground erupts and begins to shake. He catches himself, and he does miss some beats on the drum, that's for sure. If the ground in that area is loose loose earth or stone, it becomes becomes difficult difficult terrain. terrain, Which reduces movement speed in that area. So, yeah, after that happened, you everything's silent again, and even the drum stops for a moment as that Malison has to regain himself. You make out the sound after her after Aramay's tremor like shatters the ground for a moment, and then all is still because the drum stops. You can make out the sound of an arrow cutting through the air from high in the trees to the south. Let me see who's next. Quincy, before you can act, the drum is struck, but the arrow actually nails the stand uh, that's holding the drum up, and it gets deflected, striking the ground a ways behind it, bouncing a few times before disappearing into the bushes. So the drumming continues? The dr- he started, he's getting ready to start back up again. He doesn't seem like he even noticed the arrow just about hit him. He's like trying to regain concentration in, into a into a trance-like state uh, while drumming. So. Quincy, uh, seeing uh, Copernicus starting to laugh, is also going to start laughing, you know, like when in the movies when, you know, somebody starts laughing, the other person starts laughing. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, he's going to start laughing. And taking Aramay's lead is going to, instead of focusing on um, the true blood, is going to cast... Tasha's hideous laughter on the um, Malicent. Which Malicent? With the drum. Oh, okay. And that's a DC 13 will save. DC 13 wills. Uh, intel- uh, let me see. Or, sorry, it's a wisdom. Wisdom. Okay, so he gets a plus one. Shouldn't be too hard. He got an 18. What happens uh, instead on a pass? I think nothing happens wonderful (laughs) spells are so tough huh yeah nothing happens the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or fall prone becoming incapacitated and unable to stand for the duration of the spell yeah so if he passed he's good he shakes it off and begins concentrating again and before we get to Zavril something else happens it appears we have reinforcements Now, a second arrow flies out. The second arrow cuts through the night sky, piercing the stretched hide of the drum. And Irame, in this moment, time seems to slow down considerably for you. Through the dusty lenses of your glasses, you can't pull your focus. You, you, You... you can't pull your focus from the drum after that first arrow bounced off of it, you know, because you were you were already concentrated on it. You casted the earth shatter, and now you, then you saw that arrow bounce off the drum, and now you're like focused, like what the hell's going on here? And then when that second arrow, you see it coming in, and and then that's when this moment happens for you. The weave of magic that's encasing the drum begins to glow as the now slow motion second arrow makes contact and the glowing blue mesh pattern uh, it pulses 
and then it transitions to a bright orange now as it stretches and begins to expand outward. You know, you're very familiar with magical items, and I mean, you were raised around this stuff. The magic of the drum had been damaged significantly, and it's now about to explode. Then everything just kind of happens, like you just catch it. Irma is going to put her hands on the backs of her mates, whoever's closest to her, and yell to get down. So right as Irma lifts her hands and goes, uh... (laughs) (laughs) The drum explodes, uh, sending sparks and flames of different colors in every direction. You know, you hear this ringing sound in your in your ear, you know, and you kind of, when you start to come to, you start to gather your senses, you're on the ground and like you're just sub- subconsciously lifting yourself up off the ground and bits of dirt and pebbles are falling off of you. Irma can't see out of her glasses fully. Yeah, and Zavril, as you're getting up, you notice through like a green flame that is on the ground, you know, just kind of dying out a little bit, you know, because these are magical flames and there's nothing really to catch fire on the dirt, but they're still burning, uh, at least for now, but you can tell they're going to be dying out soon. But you can make out through these green flames the human-like Yuanti with the two Malisons are now kind of looking around behind them and you hear shouting and screaming happening. You guys all start to regain your senses too and looking around as you're getting up, you notice the Iwanti that was in front of the drum. He's now about 10 feet back, almost under that tree there. And his black, he's, he's got his, his hands are just blackened and burnt and he's clawing at his face, oh. um, just all burnt to shit. And he's hissing and screaming. Uh, the four Zinti, uh, these, this guy. These are the Zinti nearest where the platform the, the, and the drum were. Yeah, all the nearest Zinti to the drum are, their bodies are just scattered on the ground, not moving, burnt to a crisp. All right, I have a serious question here. How bad does it smell right now? <laughs> it actually smells of like, um, like... It smells of like a magic ritual of sorts. Just an arrangement, you know, there's some sulfur in there, some burnt flesh, there's some all sorts of weird shit going on. Um, (laughs) Incense. You know, it it varies. Smells a little of potpourri and human sacrifice. (laughs) I can't tell what I dislike the smell of more, burnt zinti or burnt (laughs) malison. Yeah, so the remaining zinti begin to flee in confused terror in every direction. Oh, they're running. Oh my god, can we join them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they just start piecing out. So they're not under control. That makes me feel good. They're not under control. They don't appear to be under control anymore, and they just look con- confused and terrified at what's going on. It was a rude awakening for all of these primitives. This guy's actually dead. Delete. You know, and, and these guys, they're just sprinting the hell out of there. Now, let's get back to business. You hear the woman shout out, Hurtag de Stega, you pathetic lot, come for us. And the three of them slink behind cover with their weapons drawn. They have a good idea where this attack is coming from at this point. And so now they're huddled down behind this tree, trying to take as much cover as they can. Weapons drawn. And then the woman uh, lifts her arm towards you guys while facing the guard in the tower and says, If any of them move, shoot them. Zavril, you're up. Zavril, we must believe in our weapons. You're now back (laughs) on your feet. And now you have this whole new situation happening. Zavril's going to lay down his weapons. And, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, attempt to get to my feet, um, shake off the explosion. Uh, now, just to get a, a clearer picture, the what is to the far right, the group of three that just moved over there in front of the hut? In front of the hut is the Yuanti Brood Guard. Uh, that, that's the one of the 
creatures that you the saw. The one that's patro- been padding back yeah. and forth? Uh, or y- one of them. I don't know if it's the same one that was patrolling, but it is the same creature type. The one, two, are... Or what type of weapons do they have? Scimitars. Like, do they have their bows drawn? Uh, the two, yes. The guard in the tower has his bow trained right on you guys as soon as it's his turn. Someone's getting an arrow. <laughs> the two by the woman also have their bows drawn, and as soon as it's their turn, someone's getting an arrow. Well, depending. They're, they're, those ones aren't really looking at you. They're, they're kind of expecting an attack from behind. Uh, and the brood guard is facing you guys. Um, uh, and the one to where the drum exploded, he's just kind of on the ground, yeah, breathing in pain. Yeah, let me tap him. All right. I will hop off of the platform, grabbing my whips as I uh, move out, and then attack the Malicent that was, or that's closest to us with its back turned to us. Let me see an attack roll. Uh, with the first whip, it is uh, armor class 15. Yeah, that's a hit. Then with the second whip, it's going to be armor class nice. 20. Yep, good, good. Two hits. Uh, so we'll be a total of four slashing damage with the first whip and five with the second. So nine. So Zavril steps up. It reels out in pain, and it now has your attention. Or I have its attention. As all this is going down, now you notice that movement that you saw in the bushes. Out of the bushes, you notice a, an, a lightly armored man, human. He has a bow in his hands, and he lights an arrow and fires it at the guard tower. You also notice something else. Now, down all the way to the south, you notice three aracocra flying out of the nice. darkness and two of them the two in front appear to be lightly armored but they have shields and spears that they're armed with hear the flight of the valkyrie so it's <laughs> called yep that's exactly what it's called and you see a third one land not not nearly as close and this one is holding a staff and when it lands, it, uh, it screams, For the order! And launches a flame dart at something to the west, which you don't see. You don't see this guy because it's behind huts. Sure, hope they're friendly. And you notice an, a human as well charging out of the darkness. And the human runs over there behind the hut. So you notice there's an attack happening, essentially. So yeah, now the pure blood draws her bow and fires at this guy, at uh, the one of the two with the that came out, one of the two aracockers that came out, and the arrow just zings off. Uh, she's clearly stressed out. Copernicus, you're up. Oh wow! All right. Okay, so Copernicus is going to slowly advance up next to Zavril, and as he does it, he draws his hand across the flat side of his blade. And it starts to glow uh, purplish and blues. And that color jumps up into his hand. And then he casts it forward at the group of Yuanti. And he casts Fairy Fire on them. Uh, Uh, Roll deck save. It's a 20-foot cube, so it should hit them. The one near Zavril hits 18. It's a pass. Likely. (laughs) And the woman, she gets a 10. That's a fail. Fail. And the final one rolls a one. Oh, nice. Fail. So they're glowing. These, the woman and the Yuanti to her left, her to, yes, is glowing. So that gives us advantage attack on those two targets. All right. And that will be, uh, that'll be Cappy's turn. All right. Next up, the Malisons. Now this the one closest to Zavril is attacking him with scimitar twice. First attack is going to be armor class, probably a miss 14. Miss. And the second attack is going to be a 21. <sighs> that was nice knowing you guys. <laughs> uh, you're going to be all right. It's going to be for 9 points of 
<laughs> slashing damage. How much poison? Um, <laughs> you don't feel any poison. Uh, surprisingly. But you are grappled. <laughs> 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 All right. The other Malison is going to move up. Nope, this one's going to stay right. He's going to move, take a five foot step to the north towards a little bit closer to Zavril and fire his bow at Zavril. Wait, what was the the first one had a uh, Does he have sword, reach? Right? Yeah, does he have reach? Uh, oh, no, it was... I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought you were... He had to take a five-foot step. For some reason, I thought you were diagonal, d- directly diagonal to him. Did you move up one? No. no. He has reach. Caper- uh, has oh, reach. okay, that's right. Yeah, so, all right, yeah, he moved up five feet. Yep, so... And this one's going to shoot at you with his bow. It's going to be armor class, probably a miss. Armor, yes, um, yeah, he missed you. Armor class 11. Yep, miss. The brood guard is now going to move to attack Quincy. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Neither did Quincy. Hopefully that uh, extra Holy decks shit. will help you out there. Wow, these little critters are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. All right, it's going to be three attacks. Claw, claw, bite. I'm no slouch myself. All right, first... Uh, Actually, we'll, yeah, we'll do the bite first. It's going to be uh, armor class 17. That's a hit. So hit with the bite, and then first claw is going to miss. Second claw, that's going to hit. That's going to be a 22. So it's the, fir- the bite damage is going to be 7 piercing damage. And then that one claw is going to be... Eight slashing damage. Wow, Jesus. Quincy is down to three hit points. Oh God, he was already wounded. All right, and that was the brood guard. Now, round two, top of the round. It's going to be Irame. Irame is going to cast Chaos Bolt at the creature attacking Quincy. Let's see a roll. 13? 13 is a miss. Ooh. 13's a miss. 13's a miss on the brood guard. Jeez, I don't know what Quincy's going to do in this predicament. Um, is there any way to avoid an attack of opportunity when moving out of somebody's... Disengage is your Disengage, action. Disengage, yeah. Um, but actually, it's not Quincy's turn. It's We got a new player on the field. It's Aiden Bormir, who you guys don't know yet, but he, um, having successfully fired his flame arrow up at the Malison on the tower, is now going to move to attack the Brood Guard. Actually, no, he still has his bow drawn. He's going to move here and launch an arrow. Natural 20. And that's going to do. Oops, that's the one. Yeah, so that arrow shoots out from Aiden and sticks into the back of the brood guard. Not bad damage. Yeah, the brood guard kind of staggers a bit from getting pelted in the back. And now it's Quincy's turn. I think Quincy will... um, He's going to cast Cure Wounds on himself, first level. Ooh, for 10. He's going to recover 10 hit points. And he's going to take a five-foot step just to put a little bit of distance between himself and the uh, brood guard. So you're at 13 now? I am. That is correct. Quincy, stop spinning in circles. (laughs) Next up, Tormach. Now, you guys got all new players on the field. Uh, This guy's going... This is one of the Aarakocras that flew up. Um, he is attacking the more human-like Yuanti with a spear, nailing her pretty good. Oh, man, just envisioning it, like the, the drum explodes, all the Zinti are fleeing, the Aarakocra Aracoc- come in. Flying down with spears in hand. Yeah, right? Spears and shields. Yep, so he... Who, who's this Boromir guy? We don't know yet, do we? Is he a dwarf? Is he a human? He's a human. Okay. All right, next up. 
the other Aarakocra. He, he, they're both focused right now on that. It looks like there's a fire in their eyes uh, as they're attacking this Yuanti. And uh, he thrusts with his spear. Well, this might be close. You get advantage on that attack, you know. Ooh, oh, that's right. Fairy fire. And that's a natty 19. Woo! Let's hit it. Nice. That's going to do it. Thank God for these guys, because I'm not hitting shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to be a total of eight damage. All right, yeah, so she looks pretty beat up already. She's not quite bloodied, but she took a few good ones. Uh, and that brings us to Zavril Dawn Tracker. Okay, I will put my new feet to use. We are going to attempt to trip the the Malison um, that I that I was attacking before. What's the name of the feat? Martial Adept. Yeah, Martial Adept, and then I took Disarming and Trip Attack. All right. When I hit the creature with the weapon attack, I can expend one superiority die to attempt to knock the target down. I add the superiority die to the damage attack's damage roll. And if the target is large or smaller, it must make a strength save, saving throw. On a failed save, it will not get prone. All right, let's see some rolls. Well, these words are boring me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I got to attempt to hit it first. <laughs> oh, a 19. And then, all right, so I add one D6 to the damage roll. So it looks like it's going to be 10 damage, and he needs to make a strength saving throw. The DC that it's going to be is a 13. And what what ability score? Dex? Strength. Strength. Uh, Natty 20. Well, he does not fall. <laughs> oh, better luck next time. Mm. Said Natty 20. You got The way you said it almost got me excited. And then I was like, oh, Natty wait a minute. That, that was for the That's other not- guy, the other team. <laughs> All right. So then for the next attack with the whip, it will be uh, armor class 20. To hit. And seven slashing. So a total of 17 for the round. It's not bad. Very no. nice. No, not bad at all. All right. Do yep. better next time. I know, right? <laughs> better next time. <laughs> All right, so let's bring it right back in. That was your turn, Zave. Yes, it was. All right, Zavril Dawn Tracker has gone. Now, what you see, uh, that caster Aarakocra that landed and launched a flame bolt of sorts. Uh, you can't tell what, unless you did a spell check, uh, whatever, but it just launched some flames out of its staff uh, in the direction behind the hut. And now it is... Um, launching another one. There's clearly another creature back there that's being dealt with, uh, and that's going to be a hit. Uh, You guys don't know what's going on, so I won't go into too much description of what's happening. Um, And then there's, you hear some uh, the clashing of steel as well back there, and something else is happening. Next up, the pure blood's turn. Uh, You now know this is a pure blood, as you see her blood now pouring everywhere, and it's very pure. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that looks like that looks like pure blood. She is in a, a position right now where she's going to take a five foot step back to put herself in line with uh, the Malison that she was with, uh, and she is going to actually shit. She has her bow drawn, so she's going to have to take another five. She's going to f- provoke. Um, damn it. You know what? She's going to drop her bow on the ground and draw that dagger from her uh, that she had on her thigh. And yeah, she can attack. If she drops her weapon and draws a new one, she can attack, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would think that the drawing is a move action. She did it with movement. Yeah, provided she dropped her weapon and not sheathed it. Right, Right, correct. Okay, so here we go. She's going to attack Katas with her dagger. Ooh, and that's going to hit, boys. That's going to be five piercing plus plus ten additional poison. Felt that. 
Yeah, one of the spear, uh, spear and shield air cockers that flew in just took it hard. But he's still, like, enraged. They've got this hatred in their eyes for these things. Uh, next up would be Copernicus Heart. What do you got? Hearing Quincy cry out as the uh, brood guard viciously laid into him with bites and claws, he's going to a turn, uh, turn attention and attack it. All right. I'm going to use my fancy purple die that I got from Black Moon Games. I slept in New Hampshire. Shout out. <laughs> local local game shop. Local game shop. I got, some, I got my bard cards from there. Not even lying. What is it? What do you think it is if it's not a Natty one? Natty 19. <laughs> yeah, oh, baby. Damn, dude. If it's not a one, it's a 19. Oh, my God. All right. 1d8. Slashing magic damage. I rolled a one, but I will use my new feet. Savage attacker. I feel Sybil prickling up the back of my neck. You can do better, Copernicus. <laughs> like my Sybil voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's a two. <laughs> so six damage. You did, you did do a little better. <laughs> How much damage? Six. Six to the brood guard. Okay, next up will be the Malison. He's going to take a five-foot step up. He's still in melee with Sir Zavril Dawn Tracker. Uh, he is going to, once again, his scimitar attacks. First one's going to hit armor class 21. That's a hit. Second one is going to miss. So let's do the scimitar it's going to be five, six, seven, eight slashing damage. Still going strong. I got this. Okay, and the next one is going to fire another arrow, this time at Copernicus Heart. Missing completely. The arrow flings off into the darkness, and you hear one of the Zinti. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the brood guard. Oh shit! What's this one gonna do? Brood guard. Now that Quincy had taken, uh, withdrawn, he has Copernicus to lash out upon. And the brood guard. This is claw claw bite. These guys, these brood guards, are a lot tougher than I had anticipated. Those bites cannot be sanitary. Oh yeah, dude. You look in there, and it's just gross. <laughs> <laughs> like a Komodo dragon. It's just- it's like a Komodo dragon's asshole. <laughs> John, if it could bite you with teeth. Its ass is probably cleaner than its mouth. <laughs> Komodo dragon's asshole with it's teeth. licking it with Imagine. its mouth all day. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, let's do the bite first. Bite. <laughs> bite is going to be armor class. Probably a miss. It's going to be 12. Miss. All right, claw is going to miss. And other claw. Ooh. 17. Miss. Damn it. Miss on Miss. 17? 18 Ooh, armor class, damn, baby. Dude, Jeez. what are you wearing? Fucking plate mail? Scale mail. Oh. Damn. Okay. Next up, we are round. What is this round? Fucking three? I think it's three. Is it three? Yeah. Yeah. Irame's only gone okay. twice. It's only three. Yeah, so yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Three. Round okay. three. Irame. Top of the round. Irame. Finbane. Um, Irame is going to take her movement first. Okay. Always, uh, always respect a good movement first. Uh, she moved just behind Quincy, took position. Narrowly avoiding an attack of opportunity. Narrowly mm. at that. She is going to cast Ray of Frost. Oh, the old Ray of Frost. She mm. did well with this. Faithful. She did yes. well with this. Yeah, stick with what you know. At the Brood Guard. All right. She's also going to use her Quickened spell. Um, to make this a bonus action. Nice. Holy shit. And nice. that is a 21 to hit. Yeah. 21 is going to hit. And that is two damage. Actually, I could re-roll that. No, okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How about that? I am... Can you re-roll re- damage? Can you re-roll damage? I can re-roll damage. Are you sure? Yes. Positive? I, oh, with her... <laughs> What ability? I can reroll damage with another sorcery point, but I believe I have to stick with the reroll. Can't so be worse. Hopefully, it's not a one. And it's an eight. Yes. Wow. 
All right. Great use of a sorcery point. I already deducted two, so now I just need to deduct six. That's using the empowered spell, which I can use in conjunction with the quicken spell that I'm using now to cast again. Oh, so you're burning two sorcery points? I am. Okay. Can you say that all again, but in a super nerdy voice? I can use I can use the in, in conjunction <laughs> spell. Me, I me, want me, you to me, say me. it in the Groucho Marx voice. <laughs> I'm not your monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chaos bolt is being directed actually at the um Aarakocra? No. <laughs> the Malison. The Malison. I always want to say Maleficent. The Malison that is in melee with Zavril. Good, because I need help. <laughs> I'm just lucky he doesn't have poison blades or I would have been down already. Again, remind me in the future to kill every snake I see. All right, so which Malison did you hit? The one in front of Zavril? uh, Yes, and I rolled a 13 to hit. Okay, and that is going to be, I believe, a hit, but let me verify. Yeah, that's going to hit. That's going to hit, and that's the Chaos Bolt. This might be the end of the Malison. 12 damage. 12 damage. What type of damage can you tell me? Yes, it is going to be either three or four. We'll go with four for force damage, 12 force damage. 12 force damage. Okay, that works. Next, the... Human archer moves, takes a five foot step forward. Once again, he's putting an arrow in the brood guard. That's hitting. Brood guard takes, absorbs another arrow. Damn, brood guard's taking it. They're tough, but they don't have many hit points. Uh, Quincy, you're out. Quincy's going to, um, after seeing all the Aarakocra and seeing this other guy, like after seeing the reinforcements arrive, he's going to inspire his friends with a mantle of inspiration I get to choose up to three people I'm going to choose the rest of my party and it, he'll, he'll simply uh, he'll shout out and infuse his words with inspiration that is it's almost it's almost like a is it like a TED Talks <laughs> it's Faye and is Origin is it like one of those Will Smith Facebook videos that have been going around. I should read. I should read the description. It's like the uh, speech that they give you in Independence Day. Or, oh or something shit! Like that. <laughs> you guys win. <laughs> <laughs> Game Battle over. Over. Right. Tomb of Annihilation <laughs> defeated. You can't talk <laughs> no, about inspiration can. without bringing up Will Smith at least three or four times. <laughs> but he's just going to. He's just going to shout to his friends and allies. He's. He's going to say. The reinforcements have arrived, and uh, that gives that gives the rest of the crew here five temporary hit points. You're very inspiring. Quincy. And right now, as a reaction, each of you can take a movement. All right. And does that conclude Young Quincy's turn? No, he's going to take five foot steps so that he's side by side with uh, Zabril. All right, so yeah, so Quincy just positions himself between Z- between Zavril and Arame. Uh, I was which, actually going to move him between, which, <laughs> which puts him now in melee with the Yuanti Malison. All right, and Tormax turn. This is you guys don't know these names yet, but just for the sake of making it easy for me, are there are any of these guys going to take a move? They get a move as a reaction. Oh, are, are any of you guys taking your react your movement reactions that Quincy gave you? And that could be without provoking an attack of opportunity. Well, seeing Quincy there, no. <laughs> seeing him move on the side of me, no. Uh, Copernicus is going to stay in combat with uh, the creature he's facing now, so no, he won't move. All right. Tormac moves in, closes the distance with the pure blood. He is chasing her down, having advantage because of the Fae Fire. He's going to thrust forth with his spear. Ooh, that's going to be a hit. Nice. Chip, chip, chipping away. All right, and the other Aarakocra is actually going to stay put and, and attack from where he is. 
uh, because that works. He's already in melee with the pure blood, and that's going to hit. All right, yeah, she is now bloodied and closer to death. Next up is Mr. Don Traka. Zabril is going to end this Malison's life. <laughs> All right, he will ready his whips again. Let's see what your whips can do. Uh, the first one is going to be armor class 13, while the second one is armor class 22. Both of them are going to hit. Nice. Yep, the Malison's got the low AC. It's a 12. Uh, the first whip will hit for five slashing damage, while the second one will hit for seven slashing damage. Nice, solid. Though it is still kicking, uh, but it uh. was definitely <laughs> a good attack, and it hisses out in pain as as your whips lash it, tearing little cuts into its flesh. Now, apparently satisfied to the south, the caster Aracocra. He is going to cast a... He can reach with Produce Flame, is the name of that spell. Fire shoots forth from his staff again, but this time missing the uh, pure blood altogether. And the human is also making its way. The other human in the south that was fighting with uh, alongside the caster is oh, now I, making I missed its way. that there was a second human. Yep. Well, you, yeah, it's a little, little further down, a uh, yeah, little to the south. They're, they are coming up, though. The pure blood is cornered, attacking again with her dagger. It's going to be a hit for minimum base damage, but poison. Okay. So these guys are taking the brunt. These Aarakocras are taking the brunt from the pure blood and the other Yuanti. Copernicus Heart, you're up. You're a nasty brute, but don't bring claws and teeth to a sword fight. That is a 13 to hit. 13 is unfortunately a miss. And you hear it reply. It is you that is going to die. Ah, uh, you didn't think it could talk, huh? It's a little beastie. Ah, uh, he's a little taken aback. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>